Hello everyone, this is Rick Ray from rickrayfx.com. That's my website where you can go to find out more about Forex trading. And here we are with another weekly analysis and I will be sharing my trade setups with you. And first we will look at the news as I always do, forexfactory.com. And again, I apologize for the background noise that you hear. Again, uh, last week I was, I was uh, in the east of Thailand on a resort in Kanchanaburi, if you know where that is. But this week I'm in North Thailand, in Chiang Mai, and staying in a nice hotel, but there is a live band downstairs on the, uh, I'm on the seventh and eighth floor, but I can still hear the live band just a little bit in the background, so I apologize uh, for that, and I'm speaking as loud as I can using the uh, microphone from my laptop, so I hope it's not too distracting. But again, my apologies for that. So let's get started with the news and then I'll share my trade setups with you. So looking at forexfactory.com as we usually do, uh, we have the last week of March 2023 coming up and finally it looks like we're not going to be just overwhelmed with the high impact news. As you know the last couple of weeks have just been crazy, we can't even get it on one full page. But this last week of March, uh, there's no week, uh, high impact news on Monday, a little bit on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So just be sure and check forexfactory.com for your local times. The times you see here are Asian times. If you live in uh, Vietnam, Laos, or Thailand, Malaysia or Singapore is one hour ahead. But uh, be sure and check forexfactory.com uh, for your local times to be aware of these high impact news items which do affect the movement of currencies and commodities. But it looks like it's going to be a little bit quieter week, a little bit lighter on the, uh, the impact that the news will have. The only thing we are concerned about at the moment uh, fundamentally is the, uh, the issue with the bank crisis that we're seeing globally. And, you know, there's a lot of fear in the market right now. We don't know exactly what's going to happen, how this is going to unfold. Continues to be a, a bit of a crisis with the banks, whether they're going to be able to resolve their situations, especially in Europe with Credit Suisse and perhaps in the United States. So let's just uh, be aware, okay? There's a lot of fundamental impact on the uh, Forex market at the moment. All right. Let's have a look at uh, trade setups that I have for the upcoming last week of March 2023. Here are the trade setups that I'm looking at for this upcoming last week of March 2023. So just remember, this is not financial advice. I'm sharing my trade setups with you, hoping that it might give you a little bit of insight on, on the market movement, on the market sentiment, what the current market situation is. I'm not suggesting or recommending that you take these same trades. You can, but it's up to you to manage your own account and to use good risk management. And I share with you my pending orders. It's up to you to put your stop loss where you want and to take profit wherever you want. Okay, so let's get started with the Euro US. I have a buy limit with the entry price at 1.0715. I see the Euro US continuing its bullish move. It's done a retracement. Let's give it a chance to pull back just a little bit more to 1.0715 and I have a pending order of buy limit for the Euro US. Then the odd US, uh, it's neutral. Okay, so you remember if you follow me at all, watched any of my videos, if anything is neutral, for me that is no trade. There's no clear direction on the odd US, so I prefer to just wait and, and see how it unfolds. The New Zealand US, I see that as still bullish, all right, but we'll need to let it pull back just a little bit to 0 0.6186, and that's where I have my pending order of buy limit on the New Zealand US at 0 0.6186. The pound US, I have a buy limit on that also. It needs to retrace, correct just a little bit. My entry price on the pound US the buy limit is 1.2185, 1.2185. The USD CAD I see is still bullish, so I have a buy limit on that with the entry price at 1.3715, 1.3715. And then a couple of minor pairs, the pound New Zealand, a buy limit on that also. All right, the entry price between, all right, between 
1.9495 and 1.9600. So it could come down to this support level, which you see right here. That's the first blue line. But the pound New Zealand moves more than any other currency pair, and it could fall back down into this range here where you see it likes to stay in this range up and down quite a bit. So that's why I have two pending orders. 1.9495, that's the first one. If it just looks like it's going to break through that, then I have another pending order at 1.9600. Well, the, the bottom one is 1.9600, and the top one is 1.9495. Okay, so the Euro CAD. I have a pending order on that, a buy limit also. That needs to retrace just a little bit more, come down to this support level at 1.4720. A buy limit on the EuroCAD. And then finally, the one that's been driving everybody crazy <laughs> the last couple of weeks is gold. What is gold doing? My goodness. The last couple of weeks has just made some monster moves. <laughs> right. 2,000 pips in one week. It just went went totally crazy. And as I told you last week, it was getting up to around uh, 2,000. I believe uh, in my last video, it closed around 19, uh, 1989, 1990. I didn't think it would hit 2,000. If it did, I would caution you, don't be buying at those high prices because it needs to tra uh, retrace, correct, pull back. And I know that some people were getting, getting, getting greedy, all right, when it broke above 2,000, everybody's saying, well, it's going to the moon, and it didn't, all right, it fell right back down to 1935, just two days later, okay, it did get up to uh, 2009, all right, but it didn't stay there, came right back down, right back down, you see the big pin bar, came right back down to 1935, just two days after it broke above 2,000. So I hope you didn't fall into that bull trap, we call it. So we got a strong support level at 1935, then it made another move up on Thursday, uh, late Wednesday, Thursday, and then got up to uh, 2003, 2003, 2003.28 uh, during the U.S. session, but couldn't stay above 2000 again. Okay, so that's a, that's a very strong psychological number, 2000. All right, uh, even when a couple of years ago it got up to 2070, it didn't stay up there. All right, came right back down. So it's a very, very strong uh, now resistance level. And it, can it break above that and keep going? Well, we don't know yet. All right, so you've got to be cautious. All right, so that's why I expect that it will come back. It closed in the U.S. session on Friday at 1976. So I'm, exp I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm patiently waiting with my buy limit at 1935. And then I will buy again, and we're likely to see another run back up to around the 2000 zone. Okay, so just be nimble. Be quick with gold, all right? You, you cannot take a trade with gold and hold it forever. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, if you got in early when it first turned bullish, yes, you would have had a good run. Uh, overall, that was nearly 2,000 pips over a period of several days. But now it's uh, starting to correct, and, and there's a lot of fear in the market. Okay, the fear index is very, very high, and this situation with the bank crisis globally in the U.S. and in Europe uh, is causing people to be scared, all right? And gold is a safe haven. They go for that when the news is bad, but uh, then there's a lot of, you know, the central bank's trying to jump in and fix things, so that looks good, and then gold starts to come back down. Just be nimble, be cautious, all right, trust your strategy. Gold is still bullish, but we do need to see some correction with it being what we call overbought right now. Okay, that's why I'm waiting patiently at the 1935 zone to take another buy trade. That's my buy limit on gold at 1935. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you for being here. I do appreciate it. Don't forget to like uh, and subscribe. Subscribe to my YouTube channel so you'll get notification every Sunday when I make these weekly analysis videos. If you do have any comments or inquiries, just leave them below this video. I do reply to everyone. Okay, thanks again for being here. Have a great trading week, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.